Hello, my name is Balen Huey, and I serve as Crocker's student body president. I would like to welcome you to the virtual Veterans Day assembly. Today at Crocker High School, we'd like to recognize the veterans in our community for their service and their pride for this country. Many have served and many have died, but they still remain in our hearts. Today, we are hoping to honor the many veterans that served our country through music, videos, and memories. Forward, arch. Call guard, halt, left, haste, present, colors. Order, arms, right, haste, forward, arch. In 1892, the pledge was written for the 400th anniversary of the discovery of America. In 1924, Congress officially adopted the pledge and decreed that it should be recited while holding the right hand over your heart. Here we have the Crocker Elementary reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic. 
republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, from liberty and justice for all. Today here, we introduce you to our guest speaker, Nathan Scott. He joined the active duty Army in 2003 as an electric tech. He deployed to Operation Iraqi Freedom from 2004 to 2005 and 2006 to 2007 for one year each. He returned home for a second deployment and transferred into the Army Reserve. That is when he volunteered to be a recruiter to recruit more people into the active Army and Army Reserve. He left the military due to family issues in 2012 and went to work as a civilian. He spent six years with PepsiCo and worked up from merchandising to district sales manager. After seeing his success in making his way up the corporation ladder, he decided that he missed being part of something bigger than himself. He started to get back into the military and eventually decided to join the Missouri Army National Guard as a recruiter. He chose the Guard because of their belief in serving here and because their philosophy matched his goals. He devoted his life to recruiting because it followed allows him to reach individuals that thought their path to success was far too rocky to travel and he can show them the path to make their lives something to be proud of. He is going 
into his third year as a Missouri Army National Guard recruiter, and he has never been more proud of his career than he is right now. Hello, my name is Staff Sergeant Nathan Scott. I'm a recruiter and career counselor with the Missouri Army National Guard. Today I'm here to tell you a little bit of story that relates to Veterans Day and the beginning of our country. We are all familiar with our nation's anthem, but for many of us, we let the words of our anthem roll off of our lips and we don't even realize what we're singing. I'm gonna tell you a story that goes back to the beginning of our country. There once was a lawyer with the name of Francis Scott Key. He wrote a song that I'm certain you're aware of. It's in most of our hymnals in our churches throughout our nation. We know it as our national anthem. It is a song of America. But we go to football games, we hear it at baseball games, and on Veterans Day, we stand, we sing the words of this song, yet they float off of our lips without meaning. Most of us memorized them as a child, but we never really understood what they meant. Francis Scott Key was a lawyer in Baltimore. The colonies were engaged in vicious conflict with the mother country, Britain. Because of this conflict, they had accumulated prisoners on both sides. The American government initiated a move. They said, let us negotiate for the release of the prisoners. We want to send a man out to discuss this with you. They were holding American prisoners in boats about a thousand yards off the shore. They said, we want to send Francis Scott Key out to come and negotiate for the release or mutual exchange. So he went out on a rowboat and negotiated with the British officials. He soon reached an agreement to the exchange of the prisoners on a one-for-one -one basis. So Francis was happy. He went down into the inside of the boat, and what he found was a cargo hold full of men in cages. Men, I have news for you tonight. Tonight I have negotiated for a sexual release and your return to the colonies. He said, you'll be taken off this boat, out of this field, and out of your chains. He went back on the board to arrange their passage ashore. The admiral said, we have a slight problem. He said, they will still honor the release of the prisoners, but will merely be academic after tonight. It won't matter at all. Tonight we have laid an ultimatum upon the colonies. Your people will either surrender and lay down the colors of that flag you think so highly of, or you see that fort over there, Fort Henry, we're going to remove it from the face of the earth. Key said, but how on earth are you going to do that? The admiral said, well, if you will scan the horizon of the sea, and he looked, he could see hundreds of little dots. He said, that's the entire British war fleet. Every cannon and all the gunpowder of this army is being called upon to demolish that floor. It will be in within striking distance in a matter of two and a half hours. The war is over, and these men will be set free anyway. Key said, you can't shell that fort. It's a large fort full of women and children. It's predominantly not even a military fort. So, the admiral says, once they lower the flag, the shelling will stop immediately, and we'll know they've surrendered, and you'll now be under British rule. Key went down into the ship and told the men what was happening, and said, I'll shout down to you what's happening as I watch. As twilight began to fall, suddenly the British war fleet unleashed their fury. The sound was deafening. It was impossible to hear. The sky was dark and was now lit with artillery. The soldiers in the boat were yelling, tell us where the flag is. Is our flag still there? Every time a bomb would explode near the flag, they could see it in the illuminated red glare, and he would report to the men and the that the flag was still up. The admiral then instructed his men to focus directly on the rampart where the flag stood. He said, for the next three hours, we will focus on that flag until it burns to the ground. All he could hear was the men down below praying, God, keep that flag flying where we last saw it. Sunrise came. There was a mist lifting. All he could see was the flag through the shredded, that was shredded with gunpowder and burns. The flagpole itself was at a crazy odd angle, but the flag was still at the top. Key rode out to see what had happened. He noticed it had taken several direct hits. And when it had fallen, he noticed that the men had came to hold the flagpole up to keep it from falling to the ground. As they died, more men came behind them to take their place. What held the flag up at that odd, unusual angle were the bodies of many great patriots. Key put his thoughts on paper while still on board that ship, setting his words to the tune of a popular English song. Oh say, can you see, by the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, or the ramparts we watched so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare and the bombs bursting in there came proof of the night that our flag was still there. Oh say, does that star spanner yet wave, or the land of the free and the home of the brave? As many of you know, freedom is not free. Brave men and women have fought and died for us to enjoy the lives we have today. 
These men and women deserve respect, and at the very least, we can stand for our national anthem, sing the words, and be grateful for their sacrifice. I say this as a fellow veteran to all of you and all my brothers and sisters in arms from the bottom of my heart, and through all the chaos, the blood, the sweat, the laughter, the tears, the tribulation many of you went through to allow us to be in your presence today. Thank you very much. I may not be a professional speaker, as many of you may know, but what I do really, really well is be a patriot and love my country and thank those that have given that sacrifice. Thank you. The Crocker R2 School District would like to thank you for joining us in today's ceremony. Throughout this video, you will hear quotes dedicated to the men and women in uniform written by the students and teachers of Crocker Schools. The pledge means honoring and respecting all the people who have come before me in protecting and cherishing American life. It means supporting veterans through thick and thin since they've given so much. Abby, 10th grade. The flag represents all the people that help us in our country. Trick, 7th grade. Freedom means the right to do things you want to do. Brian, 7th grade. Freedom is being able to do and say how you feel. Colden, 8th grade. A veteran is someone who does the right thing and is nice to other people. Chloe, 3rd grade. The flag means we have freedom and the right to believe in what we want. Blair, 5th grade. The flag is a guide for our country. Jayla, 2nd grade. Being a veteran to me means that you've been in the Army. Joni, 3rd grade. The flag means a lot to me. It represents men and women that have fallen. Balin, 12th grade. Being a veteran, to me, means to serve in the U.S. military. James, 8th grade. Freedom means to act and speak your opinions. Reagan, 10th grade. Freedom means to be able to be yourself freely. Caitlin, 10th grade. The flag symbolizes my freedom. Caitlin, 9th grade. A veteran is someone who served for our country and someone who fought for our freedom. Jakes, 10th grade. The flag means American pride. Ryder, 6th grade. A veteran is someone who put their life on the line for our freedom. Sean, 11th grade.
I'm thankful that we have veterans to help us succeed in life. Aubrey, 4th grade. The flag means the freedom of living how we want to and being able to express our feelings freely. Megan, 10th grade. Freedom means we can speak freely and we can do anything. Kenton, 4th grade. A veteran is someone who risks their life for our country. Noah, 6th grade. To me, freedom means that we have our own rights and that the American flag is the sign of freedom for our country. Riley. A veteran is a hero and my friend. Jacob, fifth grade. To me, the flag represents freedom and liberty. It means that we fought for what we have, that we are free. Kaylee, eighth grade. A veteran is a person who put their life on the line in order to protect their country. Emma, 10th grade. The flag's a symbol of love, hope, and freedom. Ashton, 4th grade. The flag shows that we as a nation are strong and we should respect those who have fallen. Josh, 10th grade. On behalf of the Crocker Arches School District, we thank you for your service. is a symbol of life. The second fold is a symbol of our belief in the eternal life. The third fold is made in honor and remembrance of the veteran departing our ranks who gave a portion of life in the defense of our country to attain a peace throughout the world. The fourth fold represents our weaker nature as for American citizens trusting in God, it is to Him we turn in times of peace as well as in times of war for His divine guidance. The fifth fold is a tribute to our country. For in the words of Stephen Decatur, our country, in dealing with other countries, may she always be right, but it is still our country, right or wrong. The sixth fold is for where our hearts lie. It is with our heart that we pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The seventh fold is a tribute to our armed forces, for it is through the armed forces that we protect our country and our flag against all her enemies, whether they be found within or without the boundaries of our republic. The eighth fold is a tribute to the one who entered into the valley of the shadow of death, that we might see the light of day, to honor Mother, for whom it flies on Mother's Day. The ninth fold is a tribute to womanhood, 
for it has been through their faith, love, loyalty, and devotion that the character of the men and women who have made this country great have been molded. The tenth fold is a tribute to Father, for he too has given his sons and daughters for the defense of our country since they were first born. The eleventh fold, in the eyes of a Hebrew citizen, represents the lower portion of the seal of King David and King Solomon, and it glorifies in their eyes the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The twelfth fold, in the eyes of a Christian citizen, represents an emblem of eternity and glories, in their eyes, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When the flag is completely folded, stars are uppermost, reminding us of our national motto, In God We Trust. After the flag is completely folded and tucked in, it takes on the appearance of a cocked hat, ever reminding us of the soldiers who served under General George Washington and the sailors and Marines who served under Captain John Paul Jones, who were followed by their comrades and shipmates in the armed forces of the United States, preserving for us the rights, privileges, and freedoms we enjoy today. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you for your time, your service, and your sacrifice. What a beautiful and wonderful country we live in. Because of you and all of our veterans, we have the opportunity to have a voice and to be heard. We have freedoms that so many long to have. We have the chance to chase dreams, raise families, have good jobs, and have the right to protect and preserve our values and our beliefs. Today, we celebrate and honor you. On behalf of the Crocker R2 School District, its Board of Education, the administration, faculty, staff, and all our students, thank you for viewing our celebration of our veterans on this day. We look forward to the near future when we can invite you all back in our school and allow our students and our staff to celebrate you in person. Please be safe and may God bless all of you. <laughs>